Hello again, my name is Mr. Brash, and this little guy over here on the left-hand side wearing a beautiful baseball cap is Mr. Squirrel. He's trying to throw us for a loop today. He's on the left and he's got a hat on. I almost didn't recognize him. Here I'm going to talk about the vertex formula and something called the discriminant. And what we're basically doing is applying what we've learned so far. If you have never seen any of my videos before, you might want to take a look at some of the other videos. Make sure you know a little bit about quadratics and the quadratic formula and that sort of thing. All right, a quick review. Mr. Squirrel wants us to review the differences between vertex form, factored form, and standard form. Vertex form called that because it does give us exactly that. It gives us the vertex. The vertex is made up of the h value and the k value directly from the equation. We do have to be a little bit cautious because the h inside the equation is listed as x minus h and so we have to actually realize that we need to take the uh, opposite of that negative when we take it out of the equation the a is still there uh, we like to call that the amplitude let me just write that down amplitude and that tells us the concavity that tells us if it opens up or down it also tells us if our parabola has stretched or compressed or anything like that that's about it from vertex form. Can't really get too much else from that except visualization of where the uh, zeros might be or ex more importantly, how many we have. So should we have a quadratic in vertex form? Maybe it is something like y equals negative two x plus three squared minus six, something like that. We can visualize how many zeros this is going to be. Where is this going to parabola going to, going to show up? So I know it opens negative. It's concave down because of my a value being negative. I know my vertex over here is negative three, negative six. And that's because we have to take the opposite of that sign there. So negative three, negative six is, you know, something like way down here. And I open, I know that it opens down. So I'm not going to have any zeros whatsoever. We say no real roots. There's no real roots. There's imaginary ones. We can pretend that, but there's no real ones. That's about it for vertex form. Factored form. I wish factored form was called zero form because it gives us the zeros. The zeros of the quadratic in this case are going to be R and S. And similar to the H in vertex form, we take the opposite of their sign outside the bracket. And the reason for that taking the opposite of the sign comes from solving for the zeros. And you would have seen that before if you're watching this video having already learned a little bit about uh, you know quadratics. Still has the amplitude, so we still have our concavity up and down and uh, the uh, stretch or compression or anything like that. But it doesn't directly give us the vertex. We know whether there's going to be zeros or not. The vertex we have to actually sort of build ourselves. So the x value of the vertex is going to be the midway point between our r and my s. So I'm going to have to add r and s and divide by 2. That's because of this uh, idea that a quadratic is symmetric. Same on the left as it is on the right. In order to get the y value for the vertex, you would have to take that x value of the vertex and plug it back into the equation. So if I had an x value here, I would plug it into the x here and here, solve and get my y value, the vertex. Now in both of these formats, if you wanted to get the y-intercept, you could still do that. But where does the y-intercept occur? So the y-intercept always occurs, and this of course, you know, as with any video, you could pause it, answer these questions in your head, but the y-intercept occurs when x equals zero. So you could plug an x of zero into both of these equations and still get the y-intercept, but you do have to plug that in and you do have to do the math. Now, originally, if you were following my videos along from the beginning, you'd say that vertex form and factored form are the better ones of the three. Standard form, uh, not really that great. Doesn't give us a ton of information. We do have our A value, so our amplitude is still there, which gives us our concavity uh, amplitude, and it gives us whether or not it opens up or down and, and this kind of thing. But the rest of the letters in this equation don't seem that useful, and at least they haven't until we've learned some of these other things. But I want to get back to this y-intercept for a second. If I do plug x being 0 into my standard form equation, if I put a 0 in for my x squared here, this becomes nothing. And if I put a 0 in here for my x, this becomes nothing. And the c is a constant value. So it actually turns out 
that the y-intercept is visible in standard form. The c value, that's the y-intercept. Because it's the only thing left standing when we plug zero in for x. In order to go from standard form to something like factored form or vertex form, we learned things like factoring, and I have a whole playlist on factoring and different ways to factor and that sort of thing. You typically would do you know, product and sum or decomposition or something like that to get it into factored form. We also learned how to complete the square and that gives us the vertex form. And completing the square is what led us to the, ver the quadratic formula. So completing the square is really what is the process that leads us to this formula right here, which is what gives us the zeros when things don't factor nicely or we're too lazy to factor. Well, I wanna focus on the quadratic formula today. I wanna focus on two pieces of it. The first piece that we're gonna focus on is the negative b over the 2a. So we're gonna focus on that portion there. Uh, some people call that vertex formula. I honestly didn't hear it called vertex formula until just this year. I really just called it the x value of the vertex. So that vertex formula is that sort of left-hand side of, the, of that, that formula, the quadratic formula rather. And the stuff underneath the square root sign. I mean, yeah, the square root sign too, but we're not really gonna worry about ourselves about that. Uh, we call that the discriminant. The discriminant. So I'm gonna talk about those two things individually now. The vertex formula is really not that big of a deal other than the fact that it gives you the x value of the vertex. So if I had some equations, say y equals 3x squared minus 6x plus 12, and we wanted to know what the vertex is of this without completing the square, without finding the zeros and then averaging them and dividing, blah, blah, blah. What we're all going to do is just negative b over 2a. We're gonna get our x value of the vertex that way. So we can say that the x value of the vertex is negative b, in this case, negative six, all over 2a, in this case, the a is three. Well, it's gonna be positive six over six. So the x value of the vertex in this particular quadratic is a one. In order to get the y value, you just plug that in and do the math. So I'd get one squared minus six plus 12. Well, three minus six is negative three, and then we add the 12 and we get nine. And so the y value of our vertex is nine, and we could say the vertex is one and nine, or one nine. And it's that simple, and that's the greatest thing that we can get from standard form, uh, from the uh, quadratic formula. Well, let's talk about the discriminant now. I used to do entire lessons on the discriminant, but it's really not that complicated. When you think about what a square root is, can I take the square root of an, a positive number like one, or four, or nine, or even five? And the answer is yes, absolutely. So all of these values here that I've written, uh, that's greater than zero. Those are all above zero. And if I take the square root of those, I'll get a positive and a negative answer. You know, the square root of nine is positive and negative three. So whenever we put something underneath the square root sign and we can do it, because don't forget the discriminant, that portion of the quadratic formula is usually under the square root sign, we'll get two answers. All right, now what about the square root of zero? Well, the square root of zero is just zero, and that's only one answer. So for these up here, these give us two solutions. Oops. So this is two solutions. This right here, we only get one solution. There's only one answer. And then what about negative numbers? And a lot of people will say, okay, there's i, there's imaginary, all this other thing. So negative three, negative nine. In this particular case, we say that there is no real solution. There are imaginary solutions, and you can watch entire sections of videos on i and this idea of the radical of a negative number, a square root of a negative number, but uh, I'm not gonna get into that today. Well, those are the three possible outcomes from a discriminant, from that portion that goes underneath the square root. So if I take this exact same uh, quadratic scenario here, 3x squared minus 6x plus 12, and we examine that with our b squared minus 4ac. So b squared minus 4ac. And let's see what that gives us. So b squared, that'll be 36, because negative 6 squared is 36, minus 4 times 3 times 12. Well, 4 times 3 times 12 is 144. And so 36 minus 144 is negative 108. 
So for this quadratic, if I'm going to plug this into the quadratic formula and I try to do the square root of the b squared minus 4ac portion, I'm not going to be able to do it. It's a negative answer. So for my example that I just honestly came up with on the fly, this has no real roots. And you can really just say no zeros. No real roots, it has no zeros whatsoever. So what do we know about this quadratic now? Well, we know that it opens up. The three is positive value. We know that the vertex is in quadrant one. It's at one nine. So I know that it's at one and up here at nine. And then I also know that it has no real roots. I could have actually garnered that. I could have visualized that straight from the fact that the A value is a positive A value and my vertex is in quadrant one above the X axis. If it's opening up and it's above the X axis, there's no real roots. So I didn't even have to do the discriminant if I didn't want to. And so I know this opens up and it's in this quadrant. I also know the y-intercept. The y-intercept is 12 from the information that I mentioned uh, before uh, because that's the C value in the standard form. So it's amazing how far we've come in our learning when originally when we took a look at standard form, we thought, ugh, there's nothing we can get from standard form. When all of a sudden through these tools, we can get all sorts of information from standard form. All right, I'm gonna do two examples and this one's the first one. We've been asked to state the vertex, the y-intercept and the number of zeros for this quadratic right here. I'm actually gonna work a little bit backwards on that one. I wanna state the number of zeros first because I could visualize it after I find the vertex, but I wanna practice using the discriminant. So we're gonna take a look at this b squared minus 4ac portion, and we're gonna see what that gives us. So the b is negative 42, and so we're gonna square that and get some massive number. We're gonna say minus four times three, because that's my a value, times c, which is 72. We're gonna see what this gives us in terms of the number of zeros. 42 squared is a quite a large number. And of course, this is a video, so you can pause it, go ahead, do your own thing. Try this answer on your own before you see my answer. Four times three times 72 is 846, or sorry, 864 rather. And so we do that subtraction and we get 900. 900 is a positive value. It's easy to take the square root of 900. So there's going to be two real roots. This is going to have two zeros or two real roots. We know it's going to cross the x-axis. Awesome. Let's find the y-intercept. Well, the y-intercept is right in front of our face. It's the c value. So I can say that the y-intercept, we'll do that in blue. The y-intercept is 72, or y equals 72, or 0, 72. So I already have two very important information, two pieces of information. I know there's two zeros. I know it opens up because of the a value being positive. I know my y-intercept is 72. I could actually sketch this almost already. I just wanna get one more piece of information and that's the vertex. Well, the x value of my vertex is what? What is that? Well, it's the vertex formula, negative b over 2a negative b over 2a. Well, in this case, negative b would be positive 42, and 2a would be 6. 42 divided by 6 is 7, and so the x value of the vertex is 7. In order to get the y value of the vertex, we just go ahead and plug that in. So we're going to plug 7 in wherever there is an x, and just do the math on it. You've all got calculators at your disposal. So this will be uh, seven squared is 49. 49 times three is 147. 42 times seven is 294. 294. And we're gonna add 72 and get a final answer. I got negative 75 and you can just sort of ask yourself if that makes sense with this quadratic. Well, it opens up, I've got two zeros. So a negative value for my Y on my uh, vertex makes a lot of sense here. Now I'm not gonna go ahead and get the zeros of this because I wasn't asked to get the zeros of this, but I could if I wanted to, I have that information. I could either factor it or put it into the quadratic formula or even use uh, the PQ formula or a variation of the PQ formula. And I guess technically I should have written that the vertex was seven negative 75 in blue in order to match my other two answers, but I think you get the point. All right, so I've answered that and I've got it really quickly. Let's take a look at another example here. We're gonna gather as much information as possible about this quadratic, and we've been asked to sketch it. So what information can we get? Pause the video and try this for yourself. I know that it opens down. This is concave down. What else do I know? 
I know the y-intercept is quite low. The y-intercept is negative 53. It's way down at negative 53, and it opens downward. What other information can I get? I could get the zeros if I wanted to. I could get uh, the number of zeros. Let's check out the number of zeros. So b squared minus 4ac is going to give me 20 squared minus 4 times negative 2 times negative 53. And so I'm going to end up with 400 minus 424. There are no real roots. So there are no zeros. So I now know I don't have to worry about any zeros, or at least I, I know the sort of visualization of this quadratic. Let's get the vertex. So I'll do my vertex formula. Negative b over 2a. That's going to give me negative 20 divided by negative 4, which is 5. Okay, so I know my x value, and now I'm going to get my y value just by plugging it in. And I used to sing this song while I was teaching. It was a Glade plugins commercial. And I would go, plug it in, plug it in. And I would always sing that whenever I had to plug a value in. So negative 2 times 25 plus 20 times 5 is 100 minus 53. We should be able to do the majority of this in our heads. So I'm going to have negative 50 and negative 53. Well, I know that that's negative 103. I'm going to add 100 to that. So I got negative 3. And so my vertex is at 5, negative 3, assuming I did all that correctly. Does that make sense? Sure, it's concave down and I have no zeros. We've also been asked to sketch this parabola. So we're going to do a quick sketch here. Sketches don't have to be accurate, not necessarily. So my vertex is at 5, so it's over here. It's at negative 3, so that's down here. I know that it's concave down. I know my y-intercept is really low, negative 53. And I know it's been stretched by a factor of 2. So it's a bit of a tall parabola, and it opens down. And there we go. In the blink of an eye, I gathered enough information to find the vertex, the direction of opening, whether or not there were zeros, and sketch this graph. All of that really became possible because of what we learned ahead of time. Because we know the quadratic formula, because we know how to complete the square, because we know how to factor, because we know what zeros are, all of these things came together to play into the fact that standard form can give us a ton of information if we need it to. All right, so that was the vertex formula and the discriminant applying what we've learned. My name is Mr. Brash. This cutie over here is Mr. Squirrel. Looks like he's ready to go uh, play around a golf. If you like that video, give me a quick thumbs up. If you got something to say, leave a comment. And if you'd like to subscribe to my channel, go ahead and hit me a subscribe. I'd really appreciate that. Have a great day and keep learning math.